Hey guys, today I wanted to do a comparison of five of my favorite larger diameter TIR lens thrower flashlights. And as you can see here, these are really quite different. I want to go through them one by one just to explain some of the differences and then show you through the beam shots at the end to help you decide which one of these is best for you. So let's have a look at the overall construction of these lights. Now, firstly, go through the TS11 and the TS11 here, you know, this is the one that comes in nice little orange anodizing. And it's a very kind of shiny anodizing. It's slightly, more than slightly slippery, but I mean, isn't that amazing that workers just offer so many different color combinations. You get bored of the usual black, standard black, okay? And this one runs off an 18350 cell that's included with the light, okay? But not only that, you can also get a battery tube and extend an 18650 tube in there so that you can have a larger battery, 18650 still in there. The TS11 runs off and 2.0, which is a little bit of a complex UI. So for those of you who just want a more simple UI, something that you can use out of the box without having to read the instruction manual, the TS11, I think just requires a little bit more effort to get into. You've got this switch here on the side. And the cool thing is that it is a uh, switch that lights up. Just want to switch it, uh, change it. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can change also the little auxiliary LEDs in the head, you know, on the side as well by clicking and holding that button. Is it, all in the sort of instruction manual, okay? But it's kind of flashy. I mean, it's a bit of a showpiece flashlight almost, okay? But the auxiliary LEDs are bright enough as well to read a map, to read a book, even uh, really, really quite dim for anything else. Really quite amazing throw considering the size of this light. And the bezel size is pretty similar to these two here. Spiros M4, Sofa and IF22A, okay? So in terms of customization and all these tiny little features that you have in here, I think the TS11 is a really good choice. But again, it's gonna take you a little while to get into it. Anodizing again is a little bit slippery, but you did get these all these different color options if that's what you want. You've got a glass lens as well in front of the TIR lens. Behind that, you've got an SFT40, so capable of producing close to the 2000 lumen mark. Over here to the right, we've got the Spiras M4. And this is a really interesting light. It has a round LED in there, like a round die LED. So. Out of all these TIR flashlights, I find this one just produces one of the most intense, roundest beams that you can find. And amazing little flashlight, probably throws, it throws just as far as the TS-11. Does have a slightly green tint, slightly warmer green tint, but the overall construction quality is amazing. When I got this light in the mail, it's really one of the first things that I noticed. It's kind of got a, it's almost in the middle of a matte black. It's not, not really shiny, but it's in the middle of matte black and like a shiny sort of anodizing. Not particularly grippy. Side switch button as well. Okay, for easy access. I do find this button you have to be careful with in the pocket. It can turn on without you knowing. So I will unscrew the battery tube just a little bit, an eighth turn, and that's all it takes. Just tiny little disconnection like that. And you're fine. Comes with this lanyard. Also takes an 18350 cell. I've seen people who have managed to get an extension tube for the M4, but I haven't been able to find one myself just based on some of my other flashlights that I have here. You've got a USB-C charging port as well. So I think this one definitely is a good little contender. 
and the beam profile I think is a little nicer than the TS11 just due to that round die LED in there. It's also a little more compact. Okay, as you see here, the TS11 looks like it just has a bit more heft in the head. Okay. Next up, we've got the Fern IV 22A. This was one of the first, probably the first TIR thrower flashlight that I got, and it's been dinged up a little bit. Okay, the anodizing is pretty similar, I think, to the Workos TS11 anodizing. It's just in black, so it is quite shiny. It's got a bit of a sheen to it. Okay, but what I really love is this button. Okay, it's recessed and it's made of aluminium as well. I'm not a huge fan of these rubber buttons. I know some people like them, especially something, you know, like, like that, like this one. Okay, I know people like them, but you know, something like that, I think it's gonna just have a lot better wear resistance over time. And it also functions as a battery indicator. 21700 cell, F22A has the largest hotspot. So if you want a TIR flashlight that just covers a larger distance but doesn't throw as far as the others, this is definitely the one to get. It's also also comes at excellent value. Not able to unscrew the head. It's been glued down. You know, you've got the USB-C charging as well. Lumen Top AD01, and this is another interesting light it takes multiple cells so it takes an 18650 cell can take a primary d cell can also take three double uh, a cells in there too so you know definitely takes primaries and that's something that i realized with a lot of my flashlights i don't have that ability to do if there was a, a power outage significant power outage and i ran out of lithium cells i wouldn't be able to use the majority of my flashlights but the lumen top 8001 really gives you that edge and the bezel is a little bit larger than all these other lights to the left and not only that you've got this crenulated stainless steel bezel okay so this thing you're gonna really find it easy to break a window in an emergency situation side switch here as well okay and uh yeah, I'm not a huge fan of side switches, but in this particular case here, for an everyday, you know, general purpose flashlight, that's no issue at all. It's slightly, I wouldn't say it's uh, completely recessed, but it is slightly, slightly recessed there. Okay, but, you know, in the pocket, really, if, if I were you, I'm just going to be unscrewing that tail cap slightly so that it doesn't turn on accidentally. And this one has an Osram w, W2 I mean, it actually throws further than all of these ones to the left. Produces a little bit less light, but the beam is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Bright and very smooth. A little bit warmer as well than the SFT70, uh, SFT40s that you find in these two lights. This one here, the largest of the lot, of course, is my Workos TD01. It's got the largest bezel. I mean, just compare, just compare these two, for example. I mean, you can get away perhaps carrying some of these ones in your pocket, but this one here, especially in your jeans pocket, you're going to have some issues with it. But this is the only one that has a tactical UI. So you can press and hold that back switch, half press, okay, to get momentary, double, double press to get strobe, okay. Genuine tactical uh, mechanical tactile switch is also a shortcut to turbo just uh, to moonlight just pressing that side switch and then turning the back switch on as well and this is probably the f my favorite anodizing anodization out of the lot apart from the lumen tops i think it's kind of similar to lumen top but just a little bit like a little bit grippier and it's interesting because workers have normally opted for a very shiny Kind of anodizing and i noticed on the previous early versions of the td01 they're using that same sort of shiny anodizing reminds me a little bit of the anodizing here in the sofa and i have 22a okay but as you can see the newer version here has matte black feels really grippy especially with this 
this these little cutouts on the battery tube and uh, this thing is amazing throws a kilometer and i think for for its performance it's a fairly small flashlight of course much more suited to your backpack and uh, it's nicely weighted as well okay the balancing point is just underneath the button here on the workhouse writing so if you're holding the flashlight like that or like that it's surprisingly well weighted it's got the sf40 in there as well and the great thing is that you can unscrew it uh, it's got this uh, it's got this glass lens on the front which will protect the plastic tir lens super important in my opinion so two great i mean workers have just done a great thing with their lights in terms of that and you've got the sft40 in there because you can unscrew this very easily, get to the LED. For those of you who are into modifications, you can add in a, you can see people putting in an Osram W2 or even an SFT70 in there. So that's a little rundown, I guess, of these five TIR lights. Uh, if you have questions, anything that I didn't cover about these lights, just let me know below in the comments and I'll get back to you. But for the time being, let's go to the beam shots. Okay, so we're going to go and test out all of my TIR throwers one by one. This is the Sofern IF22A. All right, and really large beam. I like that there's no ringiness as well. It's just a beautiful sort of large hotspot in the center. And on the edges, lots of spill, tons of spill. Okay, of course, this is on the high mode. If I step it down to one of these lower modes, there's not as much spill. Um, yeah, on the turbo mode, you're going to get all this, which is quite impressive. Um, so no issues at all seeing into the back. Uh, yeah, turn it off, reactivate turbo. One of the best value TIR throwers that you can buy. And especially if you want a larger hotspot, not so keen on those TIR lights that just have really small hotspot. This is the perfect one to consider. Lots of coverage as you can see. Okay, and that's on turbo. And I'd say it has a very similar sort of beam to the IF22A, very similar. This is run off the stock cell. All of these are just using the stock cells. No issues. Reaching those trees all the way out the back. Okay, it's getting a little warm. trees out the right hand side as well look at that it does produce tons of spill I'd say this actually produces a bit more spill than the IF22A um, 180 degree spill you can see well into my peripherals and it has M4 okay that's on the turbo mode and this one has surprisingly good throw okay less spill But the LED in here is the Yiding 5050. So, but the LED in here is the Yiding 5050. So it actually produces, it has a round die surface. So it will produce a cleaner beam profile, more circular. This is now becoming quite a popular thing with these round, these circular die LEDs. And I really hope to see more of these being made. Okay. The beam is a little warmer, but also a bit greenish at the same time. But in terms of visibility, perfect. I mean, for such a little torch, you really wouldn't expect it to throw this far. 
I'm in top 801 and that's turbo and I mean this thing this thing really has some serious throw of course it's got the largest bezel chunkiest of the lot really but you've got a an Osram W2 in there produces less light but significantly more throw than the SFT40 all things being equal able to hit those trees in the clearing out the back as well finally I've got the Workhost TD01 and this one I mean outshines all the others really in terms of overall brightness and throw I mean this is unbeatable amazing start to rain as well a bit in Melbourne look at that super impressive um, and excellent value as well it's getting a little hot but uh, excellent visibility